Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I wanted to just do another um, quick video of just some watches that I have, um, not only in my possession right now, but ones that are part of my collection. And every now and then I like to come back and do a video like this just to give you guys, kind of hammer you guys with everything I have by certain manufacturers. And the company I want to talk about today and just show you some of the watches that I have that I've reviewed, in case you might have missed them in the past, um, is is by Aragon Watch Company. And Aragon Watch Company um, used to be under the Android name, and I believe they had some sort of issue with the name, and they ended up changing the name. Um, Android really kind of followed uh, with how Invicta was making their watches, big 55 millimeter chunky dive watches. And when they, they relaunched under the Aragon name, they do make a few large models, but they kind of kept it within the 50 and under category, or 50 and under size now. So I think it appeals to more people because I will say, although I love watches that are pushing 52 millimeter, um, and a lot of you guys do too, obviously, but um, some folks say, hey, I don't go over 50 because it does start to get pretty big. And if you're not used to wearing a watch of that size, you, you shouldn't really jump right into something in the 55 millimeter uh, size unless you've had some experience wearing wa watches that are tend to be on the heavier, larger side. Um, so, but when they did that, they definitely, I think, um, most likely, uh, I think they increased their sales because, like I said, I get a lot of comments from folks, and a lot of them do like the 50 and under. 47 to 50 millimeter is a really nice size watch. Uh, for me, I like larger, but um, it's still kind of my go-to, whereas, like, if it's under 50, I have to really like the watch to want to buy it. So, with that being said, I want to share with you guys, again, just in case you may have missed Somebody that might, maybe you're not subscribed or maybe you've um, never heard of Aragon before. I just want to give you guys just a quick showdown of the ones, again, that I have with me right now. These are some of my favorite models. And as I reach out to them more, you know, I have an agreement with them that they send me watches. I, can, I review them. I send them back with a label they've sent me. And I'm able to uh, keep them if I want to at a discount. And I'll, every time I get one, I just say, all right, I'm not going to keep this one. And I ended up keeping them. So last time they sent me three additional watches and I'm ending up keeping one just because the other two, although I like them, I just, I can't keep every single watch that gets sent to me. Um, it, you know, and, I mean, some of them are gonna really speak to me and other ones I say, okay, well, that's great. I'm glad I got to share with you guys. That might speak to somebody more. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and start? And I'm gonna start with, um, let's see here. The first watch that I got under the Aragon name, this one's called the Savant and this is, one of my favorite watches, and this was a gift, of course. And this one here, again, if you guys have watched my channel before, uh, you guys know that I am a huge fan of flashy watches, and I love gemstones. And it's very hard um, to find men's watches that have gemstones that are large. I mean, Invicta makes a few, and what I love is that Aragon has been making a lot more lately. Uh, they have their Virtuoso, which I have not reviewed yet. Uh, that's a very expensive watch. I think they're a little reluctant to send it to me, uh, but hopefully I can get my hands on that and share it with you guys eventually. Um, but this is one of the first ones I got, and this one here, again, is a Savant. And I just want to go ahead and start to, off with this one here and show you. Um, this one's done in, again, now they make this they make this watch in several different executions, different faces, whatnot, but... This one just spoke to me because it's the first watch I ever received with an abalone face. And I've always been a huge fan of Mother of, per Mother of Pearl. And the abalone is just exquisite on these. And, you know, after they started using abalone, I've noticed that Invicta starts using abalone on a lot more of their watches. So, in my opinion, Invicta kind of follows suit with this. Um, I love that they have the black spinel stones on it, which is like kind of like a... Um, an alternative to a black diamond. It's much more affordable and it looks very, very similar. Although under you know a microscope and the trained eye could tell the difference. But for the average person, if I told you this was a black diamond, you would not be able to tell that it wasn't. Um, wonderful watch, about 50 millimeters. All the ones I'm gonna show you today are about 50 millimeters. Um, some are a little bit larger, but this one is about a 50 millimeter watch. And this is just breathtaking. Um, Seiko automatic movement. You can see the exhibition window on the back. Not a huge profiled watch. Uh, I would say it's probably about, um, without measuring it, I'm just going to take a wild guess here, probably about 14 millimeters, maybe 13 millimeters. Um, very basic in design. I mean, very, very simple. Uh, not a lot to it, just all mirror polished, um, but still just a breathtaking watch. I wore this last night, and I always forget that I have this in there like most of my watches. If I don't you know, dig into the safe and look at them, I kind of forget they're there. 
Um, so I was going to go ahead and throw this on the wrist because I could not do a video uh, without showing you guys what it looks like on a wrist my size. I'm about five foot seven. I'm not going to stand up for this video because I do want to keep it under like four hours. So, <laughs> so I was going to kind of keep it as uh, quick and simple as I possibly can because I have a lot of watches to show you. And again, I have a seven inch wrist so you can see that that watch definitely looks pretty big on my arm. All right, so moving on, okay. Uh, the next one I want to show you guys is, and I'm going to try to keep this in chronological order, uh, but um, I may be off a little bit, but you won't really notice. Anyway, the next one I got was I reached out to them and said, man, I really want to check out that new one, um, the, one of their new, what was it? Uh, it, was, it was a different uh, silver jet they had. The silver jet was one that they made under the Android name also. And my dad actually is the one who turned me on to Android in the beginning because he ordered one and I was like, whoa, that is a beautiful looking watch. So he got me, my parents, him, my mom and dad both got me that watch, um, one of the older silver jets for, I believe it was my birthday gift. And since then, I've just been very impressed with the brand. So when I reach out to them again, after uh, when we first started doing this whole uh, review agreement, um, I said, hey, what you know? What can you send me? You know, what do you got? And they said, well, we have a brand new watch unreleased, and this is what started my obsession with Aragon watches, just like the Invictus. But this one here, they sent me. I was like, all right, well, the Silver Jet. I already have a Silver Jet. Um, I actually have uh, two Silver Jets because I have one uh, in the rose tone as well, which I've you know, if you haven't seen that, it is discontinued. You can't get it anymore. But you might find one. It was a beautiful watch. Um, and so they sent me this and I was like, okay, I'll review another silver jet, but I was blown away when I received this watch. And this is the all new redesigned silver jet. And what's amazing about this watch is the band on this. This is one of the most unique bands that I've ever seen on a timepiece. Um, on, this is about a 50 millimeter watch again, 50 to 52. Um, the case is mirror polished, but they, on the silver jet, they use this case and cradle design where the actual case is sandwiched in this cradle. So you have a lot of depth on the case. And what's amazing again about this watch is this band. You have a combination of mirror polishing down the center of the links. And then you have this kind of sandblasted finish on the side of the links. And then you have this roller bar system. And all these actually spin. And they're like just a stainless steel, um, just like a, a, a brushed finish. And what's great about this watch, and they didn't, I don't think this was part of their design, but I mean, just look at that, even from this distance, it's got a lot of, a lot of definition to it. And what's awesome about this watch is the problem with a mirror polished watch is that they all scratch. You're going to scratch them eventually, no matter how great as it's not an indication of the quality of the stainless steel or nothing. This is all 316 L grade stainless steel, like everybody is using. And what's awesome about this design is that you have that mirror polishing underneath these roller bars. And so you can never actually touch this on a surface because these roller bars stick up past the actual polished parts. So you can see that right there on the side image. And so what's great is that any kind of abuse this is going to get is actually going to be on those roller bars. So you're not ever going to touch the stainless steel or it's going to be a lot harder to touch that mirror polish spot. So when I got this, I said, man, that is one. And this is really to date one of my most favorite Aragon watches they make. I mean, just a spectacular looking watch. Again, Seiko automatic movement. Uh, price on these fluctuate, of course. The first one I showed you with the gemstone, the Savant, is gonna run you, um, when they had it, they just got a few more in. It's gonna run you about 300 bucks. Uh, when you get into this one here, I've seen this as low as like $150, which is amazing. Um, it's a heavy watch as well. All these watches are pushed in 12, 12 ounces. Um, so, you know, they're definitely got a lot of weight to them. And again, here's what it looks like on the wrist. I mean, this watch just has a lot of character. Um, I like this watch so much, I've been trying to get, they have an all black version with black and uh, mirror polished stainless steel as well. And I've been trying to get my hands on that. And I'm, I think that's gonna be the next one I request because it's just, it's a great looking timepiece as well with that two tone. Man. All right, so moving on. So on to the next one here, if I can remember correctly. Uh, the next one here was, this is the biggest one that Aragon currently makes. And I hope they do this in some more color combinations. And they have a lot of color combinations already, but they don't make this one in gold. And I would love to see it in gold or maybe all black with some black sp uh, spinel or black onyx stones. It would just be a killer timepiece. And if they're listening, take my advice, it's gonna be a good one. Uh, this one's called The Gauge. 
And this one is measuring 55 millimeters. Um, this is a big watch. It's a very thick watch at about 23 millimeters in case thickness. If you compare it to the one I just showed you, which is a thick watch, I mean, it's even thicker than that. This is a huge, huge timepiece. I would kind of compare this to, um, if you're an Invicta fan, your Sea Hunter. This is Aragon Sea Hunter, basically. Um, this one here is done, um, they make this one in several different executions. I opted for the black uh, bezel and the black face on this particular model. And this one's powered by a Miyota automatic movement, which has your power reserve indicator on it. Um, and it also has, what else does it have here? It's got your day of the week and day of the month, and lots of loom on each marker here. Uh, this watch definitely glows pretty well at night. And again, this one here is made um, also in the Seiko NH35 movement as well. So you pay a little more for the Miyota movement, uh, but it's pretty cool. I love the Miyotas because they have that power reserve indicator and that shows you exactly how much juice you have left. Uh, most of these will get you about a 40 hour of power reserve. As you can see, this one's been in my safe for a little while, so I'm almost out of juice on it. But as you wear it naturally, they will wind. Um, huge timepiece. I get this beautiful uh, and all the Mollies have, for the most part, the unidirectional bezel and just this awesome kind of slanted uh, coin-edged bezel on it. It is just a really awesome timepiece. And again, it's big. So if you're looking for something big, this is definitely one you're going to want to pick up. And it's a heavy one too. So there it is on my 7-inch wrist. I mean, awesome band. They have a lot of detail in the different lengths. Again, this would be a great one if they ever did this in mirror polished. Really nice wrist profile. I mean, it sticks up real high. Um, beautiful, beautiful watch. All right, so moving on uh, to the next one here. And, you know, I'm not giving you the exact model numbers because you can just go to the site. I always put links in the description when you get this. And I definitely urge you to check out the different variations of all these different watches. All right, so the next one I got uh, was shortly thereafter. And this one here, again, is the same watch but done in the all silver with the NH35. This watch can be had for about, I've seen it as low as about $130, which is unreal. I mean, this one here, you can see with that silver face, just a, you can really uh, kind of see the difference between the black and the silver, how the silver face one, you kind of get a better idea of that dished face. Like it just looks like it's dished more, um, nice and deep on the face. Uh, again, this one just has your standard, uh, no power indicator, just your day of the month. Um, silver on the bezel as well um, and so just an all basic all clean looking silver watch and you can see the automatic movement through the exhibition window again that's a Seiko NH35 I believe and just a thick thick timepiece and this one because I, I wanted this one so bad and they didn't have it I think they didn't, I don't think they had this when I went to order uh, the first one and then they had it in stock so I just had to pull the trigger on it and get it and I was like man why not you know Again, this is a big boy right here. This is a big watch. And you could, like, look at that angle right there. You can see that dish. Pretty awesome. All right, so moving on. Uh, again, that was two of the... Uh, and you'll, you kind of see a, a, a theme here. Once I get one, you got to have a different color, right? So the next one I got um, was... This one's called the Charger. And this one here is done... Um, in gold and abalone and I didn't have a gold and abalone watch in my collection so I got this one and once again I fell in love with it and I just had to keep it again my intention is to never keep them but I get them and then I wear them and I'm like oh man I gotta keep that and the cool thing about abalone is that they're always different there's always ones that have they're no two are the same so let me just compare with the savant real quick so you can see you can see the savant has more of uh Kind of more of like purple and blue hues to it, whereas the, uh, uh, the, shit, did I call it the charger? This one's, is this the charger? No, this one's not the charger. Which one is it? Sorry, guys. This one, I hate that they don't put it on the watch. Well, I'll put the proper link in the description, guys. I forget which one this one's called. I, it, it might actually be the charger, but, I mean, this one's awesome, too. You have your... Um, escapement valve on the side, um, all mirror polished gold case and band. Um, you have some detail on the band there with these two kind of grooves, give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth. Um, again, all the Aragon ones used a double locking 
uh, deployment class, which I love. I, I, I've said in several videos, Invicta doesn't really use that on theirs. And then that Abalone is just exquisite on this one here. And I'll just give you the model number, though. This one here is the... Where are you? It's so hard to see these things. Oh, man. Sorry, guys. I just can't... I can't make it out here. Actually, you know what? I don't even think they put the model number on this one here. Which is kind of weird. I mean... Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. A169. So, that might not help you on the website because they list them as... Uh, what they're actually uh, called. You know, it's going to bug me. Let me just go back here real quick here on my computer. That one is the, the Enforcer. I'm pretty sure that... All right, sorry. That one's the Enforcer, okay? Um, so now we got that out of the way. So let me go ahead and throw it on the wrist here. Um, once again, just an awesome timepiece. Uh, 50 millimeters in case diameter. Just a big watch. Uh, very, very flashy. This is the only one I have in my collection with gold and abalone, and it really is a, a cool color combination there. And again, 7 inch wrist on this one a little bit. All right, so moving on. Next one I picked up here was, uh, again, I went to order another Silver Jet, and they didn't have the black one at the time, so I went ahead and went with this one here, and this one's powered by Miyota Skeletonized Movement, um, or it has a skeletonized face, sort of skeletonized face, and this one's powered by the Miyota, and the Miyota Movement on this particular one is all gold. So it looks really cool, and this is a two-tone gold and silver model. And the difference with this one here is you can see it still has the same markers um, for your numbers, okay? But then you can see that this, the face is skeletonized, and you can see the movement behind there. So I wish they would have made the skeletonization of this particular face um, a little more cut out, but you still get to see the movement. Um, again, this has got a uh, two-tone silver. They did a brush finish on the sides of the cradle, a sandblast finish on the bezel, which is unidirectional, and then on the exhibition window, you can see that gold Miyota movement, which is really, really cool in this here. How it has the cutout uh, pendulum on there. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome looking. And then the band is actually, um, is actually brushed finish and sandblasted finish or satin finish as opposed to the other one that was polished. And you still have that roller bar system right there. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this one on the wrist. And they make this one here in a silver. They make it in a rose. They make this one in a, uh, the one you see here. They make it in a, um, do they make black? I don't think they make black. But then they make the original one I showed you in three different color combinations. Uh, this is one of their most popular models. So you're going to see this in a lot of different executions. And I just, they, they have one in black and abalone, which I'm just, I, I, I've been kind of hesitating but wanting to pick that one for a review because I know I'm going to want to keep it. Just awesome, guys. All right, so moving on from there, um, the next one here, man, this one here they created, uh, again, this was another old model that they brought back uh, from the Android name, and they changed it a little bit where they used to make it in the smaller size, but mainly they made it in the 55 millimeter, which is a tank of a watch, but they didn't make a lot of different combinations of it. I got, ended up picking one up in just a satin finish or brush finish, uh, stainless steel, with a blue face, um, they came out with this and I had to get my hands on it. And I tried about six months ago to get this in uh, a different color, but they were nice enough to send me this one. And this one is one of my favorite watches. Um, it's funny, you know, you guys, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys know I love the gold and the gold on gold, but I've been getting involved in the black watches. And I've always said, and I say in all my videos when I refer to a black watch, that it needs something to make it pop. Otherwise, it just is just a boring black watch, just in my opinion. And this one here just knocks it out of the park. Uh, this one's done in a, they say it's more like a black mother of pearl, but I would say it's a darker mother of pearl, but on, mother of pearl is gonna be a little different on every model. I have a watch I'm gonna show you next, it's a little bit darker. It's more of a baby blue. And especially on a black watch, it definitely takes on uh, more of that bluish uh, hue to it. 
Mother of Pearl is just awesome looking. Markers on it, day of the uh, loom markers, day of the month, and you have this awesome bezel again with the uh, gemstones. This one is black onyx. Awesome mirror polish, black finish, and the millipede has this, this just amazing band. It's one of the unique bands on any watch I've ever seen where it actually looks like a millipede or a centipede. You have these huge screws to adjust the band, of course, and take out links. You can take out or remove every single link on this here, and I love that they've done, again, the two-tone. We have that combination of black and stainless steel. And again, your exhibition back, powered by a Seiko. NH35 or 4, this one here, I forget exactly which one. Uh, this one here, I mean, is just, just awesome. You know, and I, like I, I said before, I've always wanted to have black watches in my collection. I had a combination of, you know, different materials and gemstones. And I really hope that at some point they make this watch, um, or this, the charger, like I told you earlier, in all black, black mirror polished with the, or a combination like this, but do a black mother of pearl face, nice and dark, and then do that black bezel on there with the black stones. Uh, just, just awesome, awesome color combination. Again, you have to like flashy watches like this. Not every guy is going to want to wear something with uh, gemstones in it, but again, uh, this is just my cup of tea. I love this watch. All right, so moving on from there. Um, and again, each one of these watches is reviewed uh, in further depth on my in some of my other videos where each one of these I've already reviewed. So if you see one you like, uh, by all means, check out my playlist under Aragon and check out all these watches. There, are, There's more information about the size of each of the band, the case. I'm just kind of throwing them at you real quick here. Um, so the next one is, the, the next shipment I received from them was the last one they sent me. This is three watches and they were nice enough to go ahead and send me uh, I'm going to hold off on this one. Let me show you. This is one of their iconic watches. Again, they made this one under the uh, under the Android name. This one here is the Hydromatic. And this is their only cuffed style watch that they make. Uh, the one they sent me here is done in a combination yellow tone, obviously, and silver stainless steel. And you have a skeletonized face. This one is powered by a Miyota automatic movement as well. You do have your exhibition window on the back. As you can see right there. And they have this crazy band on it which is actually a cuff style and it's put under pressure with these spring loaded uh i guess tension springs on the band uh very very futuristic in design a uh, very similar case compared to the millipede where they use this kind of cnc machine grooved out case um very very interesting looking watch um this one i am not going to keep only because uh and the only thing i have to say about it for my wrist with this particular model the band overlaps in the back. Not that it's a big deal, but uh, still, it's just not one that really uh, speaks to me. It's a little futuristic for my taste, um, but it's still an exceptional timepiece. This is one of their, their, uh, their, I mean, like flagship watches that they started making um, under the, uh, what was it, the Android name. And they kind of started off, I remember I watched a movie with, I forget exactly what the name of the movie was, but it's a very futuristic movie, I think with Keanu Reeves, and he actually has uh, a dual time zone, futuristic looking Android watch uh, that was featured in that movie. And this is just kind of, they cop went along, I believe, pretty quick after that with this model, uh, which is very, very futuristic looking. So, um, again, I, I this one here, the price point this one here is going to be about $350 to $500. So, sometimes I, 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 you know, for a cuffed watch, it's not really, I have to really love it to want to spend that kind of money on it. But nonetheless, it really is a unique looking timepiece. Not for everybody, but awesome looking. Um, again, the next watch they sent me in that shipment was this one here. And this one here is the, I got to look it up, guys. Sorry. I'm drawing a blank on these things today. This one here is the, come on, where are you? The Evo, all right? And this is a little bit smaller of a watch, still an exceptional watch. Um, these watches right here, let me just check their site because the price varies depending on which one you get, which movement. Um, they have some of these down to $135, $130. And I mean, then you have other ones that are a little more expensive, up to $250. Uh, this particular one is $190, and this one I requested has, again, um, they consider this a black mother of pearl, but to me, it, it kind of looks more like a blue, bluish, but you can see compared to the other watch I just showed you, um, it definitely has a little bit of a darker hue to it. And that's the mother of pearl and abalone, no two are the same. 
Again, very, very simplistic in design. Uh, and this one here is a little bit smaller. This one here measures, I believe, 45 millimeters, this one here. So um, definitely a smaller watch than I'm used to wearing. And that's really the reason why I'm not keeping this one, only because uh, for me, I, you know, I like things, uh, really, I don't like to really go under 47. But nonetheless, an awesome looking timepiece. Let me just show you that again, because I kind of jumped the gun on that. A very simple band. If you're looking for an all black watch, and this one again is done in stainless steel. You have you know your unidirectional bezel. Uh, you can get many different color combinations. They make an abalone, green, yellow, uh, lots of different variations on this particular one. And again, Seiko automatic movement and exhibition window. Uh, just, just amazing. I mean, amazing amount of watch for the money. I mean, it really is. And again, here's what it looks like on a seven inch wrist. Uh, and, and you know and. Again, not a small watch by any means. I mean, small when you start comparing it to, you know, a 55 millimeter, millimeter watch, of course it's gotta be small, but, um, you know, still, just a, just a sweet watch. All right, and last but not least, and I did kind of save the best for last, uh, or sort of the best for last. Uh, this one here is another one that I did, I am keeping because they would not send this to me the first time I requested it because it was very popular. And this one here is, again, another millipede done in the yellow gold. And this one here has white topaz bezel. So you get that look of diamonds without the price. Um, anybody who will tell you that they can tell the difference uh, is full of it. They cannot. Again, just like the black one I showed you, but mirror polished gold and silver, and you get that awesome mother of pearl, which I think the mother of pearl on this particular one looks better because uh, it's just it's not quite as uh, of a difference. I don't think it looks as blue as on the as on the black one, but just awesome. And remember, all these stones here, guys, they're actually prong set, so these aren't going to fall out on you. Just beautiful. This one is just. Awesome, and I, and I don't think, I think this is my first one that I've received uh, or that I've worn and owned or purchased in a very, very long time that has any kind of uh, stones on it that are, you know, kind of uh, mimicking uh, diamonds. Uh, you know, I had the black stones and, the, and, and stuff like that, but uh, the last time I had a watch with any kind of synthetic diamond or fake diamond uh, or anything that, you know, looks like that, I was back in the Jacob and Company watch days uh, where they had that iced out bezel and more of my more of my hip hop days. Uh, I still love hip hop. Don't get me wrong, but uh, more of those days where I, I I had stuff with like a lot of the iced out stuff, and I wore the necklaces, and I'm sure that won't surprise anybody. But um, but nonetheless, I don't wear those anymore. I still wear some jewelry, but um, that is just an awesome watch, and it's very difficult again to find men's watches that have those iced out or stone stone bezels. Um, and again, some of you may comment and be like, "Well, that's because nobody likes them." Well. I like them, and that's all that matters. And as grown adults, we can wear and do what we want. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to give you just a quick lineup while I had those other watches in my uh, in my possession. Uh, again, the Evo and the um, Hydramatic are actually going back uh, just because I don't want to drop you know $400 on uh, watches that I like, but this one here, I love. And generally when I make a watch purchase lately, um, cause there's other things I, I, you know, I, I spend money on, you know, I mean, yeah, there's they maintenance things I got to do to the car and, um, you know, wheels I just bought not too long ago th that I had to replace. Uh, I want to get a hot tub. So, you know, I try to, you know, limit what I spend my money on. Uh, but when I get a watch like that, and I've said in plenty of my videos, when you see something you absolutely fall in love with, you got to just go ahead and get it. And, uh, again, as long as it fits into your budget and you're not, you know, spending the mortgage on it, um, you can pay your bills, then by all means go do it because, you know, these ones here that I showed you, of the ones I showed you, uh, I believe, let me just double check that before I, before I give you guys a bump steer here. Let me see one thing here. All right, so of the ones I showed you, the gemstoned uh, millipedes, these are the limited edition models. So once these are gone, they're gone and they're almost gone. And right now I have number, let's see which one I got, and they are marked. They only made 100 of each one. Now, this is number 98 of 100, so I got almost the last one. And the gold one, let's see what they sent me here. This one here is, am I going to read it? 
I'm gonna have to get bifocal soon. Don't worry, guys. I'll get it. Number 11 of 100. So one of the earlier ones made. So pretty cool. Uh, they do make this one in an all stainless steel as well. Uh, but let me just do a quick check on that. And again, I always put the links. When I put those links in description uh, that go to eBay, eBay is great because sometimes things will just randomly pop up, whether it be... You know, sometimes you'll find one that maybe somebody had never wore and they decided to get rid of it. And, you know, those links are always pulling, whatever these watches are called, it's always pulling that search term from eBay. So you click that link and not only are you helping to support the channel, which I'm always honest with you guys about and tell you I appreciate it, but also like that's kind of a real time up to date, uh, you know, link as far as what is available. But going off their website, if we just see what they actually have, uh, should you choose to get it? directly off the website. And I want you guys to know too, I am working on um, every watch that I review. Uh, Aragon has decided to go ahead and give me wholesale pricing on it. Our agreement is that I cannot undercut their prices, which makes sense. I am going to create a website that actually sells Aragon watches at some point where you guys can go directly to my site and get it right from me and the manufacturer will drop ship it to you. Uh, but in the meantime, um, you know, use my links and uh, of course, if the links don't get you there, manufacturer's website's always an option for you. But let's just see what they actually have. So right now, the black one is gone, sold out. Uh, the gold and the silver model are available and they're gonna run you about 300 bucks. So, uh, exceptional watch for $300. I mean, again, I say it all the time, I repeat myself, go take your 300, go to the mall and see what you get. You don't get much. These watches, I mean, are exceptional. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We did that in 31 minutes. <laughs> it's not four hours, so I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you enjoyed the Aragon watches I showed you. Um, you will see more Aragon watches on the channel. Stay tuned for another Invicta watch that is coming in the mail. It'll be here on the 27th. Um, this one is going to, I had to get it. I wasn't in the market. I had to get it because this one here is going to go and it is just an over-the-top model. I think it is really, in my opinion, the most over-the-top watch in its particular execution and, and its model that Invicta makes. Mark my words. Stay tuned for that one. You guys are going to love it. And uh, that's it, guys. Remember, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Um, again, I appreciate you guys giving me your feedback on my video equipment. I've tried something a little different today with the lighting. Um, I have lighting reflection.